Welcome to NTD China News. I'm Karen Chang. Making headlines this Thursday, February 21st. The latest on the case against disgraced Chinese official Bo Xilai. China's microblog Sina Weibo is wildly popular, but some have found it's not easy to keep an account on it. And a WikiLeaks cable shows internal frustration at the Chinese regime's persecution of Falun Gong. Today, an update about the case of ousted Chinese official Bo Xilai. He hasn't been heard from in public for almost a year as Chinese leaders prepare for his upcoming trial. Some thought the trial would happen in March, but now it appears it could be pushed back even further. Reuters reported today, citing anonymous sources, that the disgraced Chinese official has refused to cooperate with investigators. He even went as far as going on hunger strikes and required hospital treatment at one stage. It's been almost a year since Bo Xilai's spectacular fall from grace. Officially, the once high-flying politician faces allegations of corruption, abuse of power, and implications in a murder, though no formal charges have been announced against him. Observers had expected Bo to face trial prior to the communist regime's political meetings in March. Though with about two weeks to go, NTD's China analyst Hong He says that is now unlikely. Aside from the official allegations, Bo has faced separate accusations of plotting a coup against new Chinese leader Xi Jinping. He's also been named as one of the main officials involved in the Chinese regime's persecution of the Falun Gong spiritual practice. In a written correspondence with NTD, Hung He says, quote, The leadership wants to avoid Bo's real crime but charge him with corruption. Since Bo's corruption is probably not worse than others, he wouldn't admit his crime. Hung He says without Bo's cooperation, Chinese leaders will not be able to proceed with his trial, which is largely expected to be a show trial. The U.S. government announced on Wednesday it plans to fight the increase in trade secrets theft and espionage that has been highlighted over recent hacking attacks allegedly coming from China. The strategy was released following a report this week by U.S.-based cybersecurity firm Mandiant. It said it had traced more than 140 cyber attacks to near a Chinese military unit in Pudong, Shanghai. The White House said in a report it will increase diplomatic pressure and consider introducing tougher laws to help prevent economic espionage. It made no specific mention of a country, but did name Chinese companies or individuals alleged to have stolen trade secrets. Businesses, including the New York Times and Wall Street Journal, have reported attacks they say come from China. Other victims of Chinese cyber attacks include Ford, General Motors, DuPont, Kangil and Dow Chemical. With traditional media tightly controlled by the government in China, cyberspace has flourished, particularly with the Twitter-like Sina Weibo microblog site. But Chinese censors still monitor it closely, and this week Taiwan's former premier became the latest high-profile Weibo user to be axed from the site. It was a short-lived Weibo experience for Taiwan's former premier, Frank Xie. On Wednesday afternoon, less than 24 hours after he opened an account on China's wildly popular microblogging site Sina Weibo, it was shut down. Despite being on Weibo for less than a day, Xie managed to amass more than 60,000 followers. Xie was the former leader of Taiwan's opposition Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP. It has been strongly opposed to attempts by China's communist authorities to assert sovereignty over Taiwan. A lot of netizens probably wanted to find out what he's saying on Weibo. Actually, a lot of mainland netizens support the DPP's ideals. They usually pay more attention to human rights. It's unclear why Xie's account was shut down, but it could have to do with this post. Xie said on Wednesday, quote, Freedom of speech doesn't depend on whether you have the freedom to criticize those in power, but rather whether you lose your freedom after you do so. Later that day, his account was closed. Frank Xie wasn't the only high-profile person to have his Weibo account shut down recently. Brad Pitt, who has already been banned from visiting China because of his role in the movie Seven Years in Tibet, also had his Weibo account disappear, according to Hollywood Reporter. Li Kaifu, the former head of Google's China division, had his account disabled for three days earlier this week. Li has more than 50 million followers and has been vocally critical of the Chinese regime's internet censorship. His account was reactivated again on Wednesday. The account closures comes just days after Chinese leader Xi Jinping reportedly told fellow Communist Party members they should be able to, quote, put up with sharp criticism. 
A new cable released by WikiLeaks reveals a surge of frustration being felt within lower levels of the Communist Party over the ongoing persecution of the Falun Gong spiritual practice. A local official in China's Sichuan province is calling it a waste. For 13 years, the Chinese Communist Party has carried out an extensive persecution campaign against the Falun Gong spiritual practice. Now, a U.S. consulate cable leaked by WikiLeaks suggests that campaign has fueled frustration within the regime. The cable came from the U.S. consulate in Shangdu, Sichuan province. It describes a 2009 internal order from the Communist Party's central authorities. The order came ahead of the 10-year anniversary of Falun Gong's persecution. It asked all levels of government to be on high alert. An unnamed Chinese official expressed his exasperation towards the order, saying, quote, Local governments at the township level issue perhaps 200 of these orders every year. It is all formalism and a big waste of time. A Chinese Falun Gong practitioner says, though, orders like these have turned into very real cases of persecution. She described what a police told her once when she was arrested. The police chief said, if you kill someone, I may not arrest you. But if you practice Falun Gong, I'm sorry, I have to arrest you. Don't blame me. The Communist Party is telling me to do this. But despite the 13-year persecution campaign, the leaked cable revealed that the Communist Party has had no success in eradicating the Falun Gong practice. It says the popular proxy server software, Freegate, designed by Falun Gong practitioners, is being used by many people in China to break through censorship by the Chinese regime's Great Firewall. And still to come in today's NTD China News, China records another month of falling inward foreign direct investment who is planning to build a replica of the Titanic. And this documentary about suppression in China rings true with Russian audiences. And welcome back. Foreign direct investment in China dropped to $9.27 billion in January, the Ministry of Commerce reported yesterday. That's 7.3 percent lower than last year and follows eight straight months of decline. In particular, investment from Japan fell 20 percent to $640 million. U.S. investment also recorded a drop of 20 percent to $270 million. At the same time, more investment money is exiting the country. January saw a jump of 12.3 percent in non-financial outbound FDI to just under $5 billion. Foreign investors are finding it less attractive to invest in China, owing to the rise in labor and land costs. And labor-intensive manufacturers are seeking opportunities in other Asian countries, according to a HSBC Holdings report last month. A senior economist told Bloomberg that the drop is quite worrying because it follows a string of declines. It's also the largest fall since July and the longest period of decline since the global financial crisis of 2008 to 2009. The Cultural Revolution was a period of Chinese history marked by bloody struggles and anarchy. Over 40 years later, one of the laymen in the killing frenzy is being brought to trial. The case has sparked widespread debate over how Chinese leaders should deal with that period of history. A man in his 80s was tried in China's eastern Zhejiang province on Monday for a crime he committed four decades ago. It allegedly happened in 1967 during the Cultural Revolution. According to the South China Morning Post, the man was ordered by a civilian militia to kill a doctor accused of being a spy. The man, surnamed Chiu, was on the run for over 30 years afterwards. According to state-run media, his case was opened in the 1980s, but he was only arrested last July. The case has sparked heated debate over the handling of crimes committed in the anarchy of the Cultural Revolution. Many are sympathetic to Mr. Chiu, saying he was only following orders of higher-ups. Others are less understanding, calling for justice against all perpetrators of war crimes during that bloody period. Still others point out that the ultimate culprit should be held responsible, not idolized. A lot of unethical, very ridiculous and very cruel things happened during the Cultural Revolution. Under that circumstance, although this old man has the responsibility of directly killing a person, he was actually just an executor on the bottom level. The root responsibility should be Mao Zedong's. 
Mao's face still hangs in Tiananmen Square and is generally revered as an idol by the Chinese Communist Party. There is also debate as to whether Mr. Chiu can be legally held accountable almost 50 years after the incident. State from Global Times cited a local judge as saying the case was filed in the 1980s and so is within the 20-year statute of limitation. And now a much more recent suppression of the Chinese people is the feature of a documentary co-produced by NTD. We held the first Russian language screening of Free China, The Courage to Believe on Tuesday, and it brought back memories of living under communism for some audiences. On Wednesday, NTD hosted a Russian screening of award-winning documentary Free China, The Courage to Believe. The movie discusses the brutal persecution of the Falun Gong spiritual practice in China that has been happening for the last 13 years. Members in the audience said they could relate to the persecution because of their own communist history. Uh, very much because, again, it's similar to what my families went through. They were incarcerated, they were killed. Uh, my grandfather died in prison. My mother's uh, uncle was just about torn to pieces by the communists. So it's normal for me to feel, just to, not to sympathize, but to cry with you. Because it's a, China has a wonderful culture and they're destroying it. The film, uh, uh, the film is very convincing because being from Russia myself, I recognize the harm and destruction that is caused by the communist regime to both China and Russia. This film is excellent. It touches upon an urgent topic of political persecution of Falun Gong, which is a very well-known movement. I have heard and read a lot about it, and I have personally met some Chinese people who were persecuted. The film also exposes the practice of removing vital organs from prisoners of conscience languishing in China's prison system. One of the protagonists in the film appeared at the end to answer questions after the screening. While in a Chinese labor camp, she says she was given a blood test to check the health of her organs. Free China has won awards in several international film festivals and was nominated for a Hollywood Music Award last November. It is set to make its public debut in the U.S. this summer. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That must be the motto of Australian billionaire Clive Palmer. He's all set to sign the final deal with Jilin Shipyard in Nanjing to begin construction of a new Titanic. Titanic II will very much resemble the original, with similar luxurious amenities. But according to the Jilin Shipyard, Titanic II will be equipped with advanced life-saving and communication systems. The replica will set sail in 2016. Its first voyage is planned from Southampton in England to New York. It's the same voyage as the original Titanic that met with disaster after striking an iceberg in the Atlantic, killing nearly 1,500 people. And it seems people can't wait. They've already started inquiring into tickets for the maiden voyage. Some are willing to pay up to a million dollars to set sail on it. And that brings us to the end of this broadcast of NTD China News. For more of our China content, visit our website at ntd.tv or subscribe to our YouTube channel, NTD on China. Coming up next is China Focus with Shelley Zhang. Stay tuned.